Welcome everybody to the War and Peace Baseball Podcast. Here today with Farbode Markazi. Yo. And Alex Rudy. So I'm Alex Uwe, and as usual, we're going to begin the show by complaining about the All-Star Game voting. We seem to do that every other week, so... It's tradition. It is tradition. The All-Star Game voting is closed as of right now, and we wait until Sunday when we hear the announced starters, and there's going to be a lot of Kansas City Royals in the mix there, as we have already talked about many times, but... um. You know, as you know, as a whole, other than the whole royal fiasco, what do, what do you think about the starters? I'm just glad it's not the Mike Trout and the Kansas City Royals starting lineup now. Um, yeah. They, yeah, they made a push. Josh Donaldson, Miguel Cabrera, and Nelson Cruz. All. If all, I'm just gonna say, if Omar Infante is a starter in the All Star game, I'm going to be. I'm I'm gonna be very disappointed. Yeah, the, there's been a big Jose Altuve push, thankfully, um, as of late. But, you know, as of the last update, it is still in Fonte. I think it's been a few days since the last update. So, hopefully, the big Altuve push has worked. And apparently, Salvador Perez was one of the ones who was all for the Jose Altuve push. So, Omar and Fonte's like, hey, what are you doing, man? I'm trying to get in the All-Star game. But, uh, Salvador Perez knows what's up. I mean, Salvador Perez probably has a good OPS, unlike Infante. I think Infante even knows that. <coughs> he has no business being in the All-Star game. I think he knows that, but he's just going to be like, hey, I'll take it. I'll play a couple innings, sure. There you go. Yeah, so uh, the National League 2, um, I think Matt Holliday was still the top spot, or one of the outfield spots last time. He's probably not going to be ready for the All-Star game to to start, so... You're probably going to see another face out in the outfield. Do you have the starters since the last update? Um, I don't have them handy, especially because um, Stanton now is not. True. Do you remember if um, Peterson is a starter? He's He was not a starter the last time I checked. He's, like, he, he's, like, he's close. He's in the like the fourth, fifth range somewhere in there. Probably fourth now since I think uh, it's Stanton started. and... And Holiday aren't going to play. Peterson's got to get one of those spots. Yeah, let me see if I can find... And then Pollock has a... Um, Pollock's been doing really well this year, too. Yeah, I don't know if he's getting the votes for it. Yeah. I think... I mean, Diamond... Mori Aoki still might have more votes than him. I don't it's know. the Royals. Yeah, it is. They're... At least... Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, like... Ideally, at this point, what outfield do you want to see? You want to see Harper... You want to see Peterson. The third one is kind of a toss-up. Same in the same case with the AO, like, except, you know, the Royals kind of made that decision for everybody else. Um, but, yeah, there's there's a few different names. Yeah, you know the Royals fans that just came out of nowhere? Yeah, the surprise Royals fans. Yep. Thanks for a great All-Star game. Um, yeah, but, you know, something that a lot of people have not been talking about is the all-star reserves which are picked based on player voting and manager selection the managers of the championship teams so uh ned yost is going to have a little bit more selection power surprise surprise i i but um yeah the managers normally uh make their selections based on um picking players to represent all the teams if they can like, sometimes that's not the case, but they try to have a lot of variation with their picks. Now, the question that's is, good. is Bochi going to start um, Madison Bumgarner? Hmm, that is a good question. I don't think he will, just because he's a very reasonable man, and he understands that Mad Bum has not been the deserving starter. I mean, the deserving starter is obviously Max Scherzer. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there doubt? No. Is that? No. no. Okay. So... As as for reserves, which are all the pitchers now, there are 13 pitchers that are picked. Um, well, there's like eight that are picked by the player voting and then five that are selected by the um, managers. So let's, uh, let's like list off a few that are obviously going to be in that mix. So you got Scherzer, you have Kershaw, you have um, 
Madison Bumgarner, I guess, is probably going to make the All Star team. I'm if that's Granky. Yeah, Granky. Um, you have uh, Cueto, Degrom. <clears throat> Wait, I have a question though. If, yeah. if you're the ML, if you're the American League manager, do you start Chris Sale? Or do you go with the American League, um, the, the Astros hype, Dallas Keuchel? That's a good question. I was going to go move on to that when we talked about the American League team more. Or kind of like, let, let's go and finish off like listing off some National League pitchers. And okay. We'll continue. Thank you for your enthusiasm, though. No problem. I know you're excited. Um, so I, I said DeGrom. Do you guys agree with that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's... Um, I'm trying to think that same division there. Shelby Miller. Right? Yep. AJ Burnett, possibly. Maybe. Maybe Liriano even. Yeah. <laughs> but I I'd imagine you Garrett Cole one of for sure. Yeah, Garrett Cole. We didn't how did we not say him? Oh yeah, but Garrett Cole. He should probably be higher than we listed him. But um Yeah. Cardinals I think might not no, but maybe Waka. But other than Waka, no, but no pitchers really. I think if Blaine would have stayed healthy, he had a chance that. Oh well, yeah, that's right now. Say that about. He's yeah. pretty borderline. Okay, are there any pitchers that, you know, like that's that's a you know, I think that's probably more starting pitchers than they're going to. They're probably going to take like four relievers. Four relievers, you know, like Chapman well, and. and uh, uh, Kimbrel, Paulie. Kimbrel, even. We'll st- yeah. And, um, Get in there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, there's always those... I, I don't... I, I really hope there's not those relievers that aren't closers that make the team. Because I, I have not even heard of really any non-closer relievers that have really taken a very firm grasp of, like, an all-star spot. Like, I mean, I think in the American League, Wade Davis has really a, has a yeah, piece Yeah, he does, but National League, not really. Like, you might see a guy like Mark Melanson, who's a closer in there. And I think he was an all-star before, too, not as a closer, so that would be interesting. Um, yeah, so National League pitching is always looking really strong. American League pitching does not look bad this year, either. And like you said... It's pretty much between Sale and um, Keuchel. Keuchel. I think Sonny Gray Sonny, would have been in that mix too. Yeah. He's, he was. He missed both. He missed the starts this week because of uh, food poisoning, salmonella poisoning. And um, he helped you out there when he's going to be back. He'll probably be in the All Star game though. No doubt. Um, I I think I give my start to Keuchel. Yeah, just, I I would just because of the Astros are good. Why not make make this year even better? Uh, his numbers are great too. Like yeah, two point two oh three. His last, his last couple starts especially were really good. He's making a good push, momentum wise, going into the All Star break. Um, let's rattle off a few more, shall we? So we have Sale, Keuchel, Gray, King Felix. Um, you have. Let's see who else. Um, oh, hello. Um, who else? Let's see. There are definitely some other strong archer. Archers that Archer for that. sure. Um, it's a little bit tougher. There's not as many easy names to rattle off. I feel in the American League, but um, <laughs> I think Giovanni Gallardo has to be an all-star at this point. I don't. He's doing his, so. His ERA well. is shit. But his ERA is very good right now. Yeah, but... And especially, but he has a, a, a 29 and a third score. He's a classic zone. guy where at the end of the season would be like, how the hell was he an all-star? I mean, he has a 29 and a third inning scoreless streak going right now. I think he's going to find a spot. Hector's ERA is just a little <laughs> bit worse, but... Did you guys I mean, say... Uh, did you guys say Felix Hernandez? Yeah, I did. I said King Felix. <laughs> Um, I personally don't think Garrett Richards. No, he's not. He's gonna get a spot. I I, I don't care. He, he's he deserved it last year, but he was snubbed. This year, he's had a couple control issues, and that's fine with me. What about uh, 
Well, he had control issues, like, in, like, May and early yeah. June, but he, like, figured that out. David yeah. Price, I think, is definitely deserving. David Price, yeah. I think in the National League, uh, also, Jake Arrieta deserves it. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's true. That's you can fair. swap him he's with a Pirates than, pitcher. He's had a better year than some of the guys you guys said, I think. Mm, I don't know about better than... The National League is really stacked. Harvey, too, has a chance. He has a chance, too. Like, it's a really stacked pitching league. Do you think Lance McCullers can make the American League All-Star team? He can definitely make a push. I think McCullers is my new Rookie of the Year favorite, for sure. Not pitched very many innings, but he has been a monster. When he does pitch, true. Um, Kluber? Yeah, I was about to talk about it. He has really showed up as of late to Kluber. He had an amazing month of May. He has a wonderful three and nine record, a three six four ERA. Your defense, but he is straight. Just remember, his defense is the worst in the majors. So his ERA and, and is. I think you have to forgive him for. He had one bad month, really. After that, he's been one of the better starters in the game. Momentum, like you, when he's you, good. You guys just cut out. Oh, I. Okay. Yeah. That, I hope that doesn't show up. Yeah, that was anyway, confusing. So, any other pitchers? I think Scott Casimir can make a push, too. As of late, he's been really good. What about uh, Danny Salazar or Carlos Carrasco? Carrasco, maybe. Salazar? I, 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 don't, I don't view him as an all-star player. You know who's been, ha- who's Wait, been that having... That makes no sense. sense. You His season hasn't Wait, been that makes- quite... Good enough for me. That makes no sense if you think Carrasco deserves it, but Salazar doesn't. Yeah. Well, Carrasco they have came off really good stats. Start. Yeah, but that's, that's one true. start. They're very close. Okay, too. but one person that's had like a um, very like I don't know. He he, David Price. He's had a very quiet but good year. We did say David Price. Just I I I must have been when you guys cut out because I didn't hear that. No. Oh. It was well, way that seems like a you problem. Thank you. Mm-hmm. No problem. Um, How about some uh, hitter reserves? I think we got the pitchers. Yeah, that's those are some good names there. Um, I mean, the closers, I think, is really like mm-hmm. as you, nope. you you can't really go wrong with closers. I feel like I mean, obviously, I think Batances has to be in for the Glenn Perkins. Yeah, has not blown a save this year. Um, and uh, if you had to pick one more, it might be. Um, Hmm. It's, it's kind of a that's kind of a tougher one. Like it's because after there's not a lot of big save getters in the American Britain. League. There's some pretty dominant start. Like, Britain probably would make the push. There's not a lot of big save getters in the American League. Um, there there's like a couple. The National League that has a Perkins, lot of. Perkins, I think, has a chance. He's had an outstanding season. I said he definitely has my vote. <clears throat> I would. I think he's deserving. He's been very. Uh... I think he hasn't blown a save all year. Yeah, he hasn't. So that's that's definitely him and Brandon and Batances, I think would be the three in my in my book for the American League. Yeah, that seems fair. And I think Davis. And of course, Wade Davis. I think Davis, Wade Davis. I think Davis using, and Box Kruger have about have like outside chances. I mean, Davis has given up I think like one run the whole season. So it seems like that. Yeah, one earned run. It seems like that. Last really season. one earned run. So this really. Yes. Really. Yeah, that that is definitely worth considering. Um, I think you have to give him. I mean, I, I think that's the case. Even though you're not a closer, your year is so incredible that uh, you get him in the All Star game. I think uh, Trevor Rosenthal in the National League also has to be. He doesn't get a lot of credit, but I don't think I put him above like. He's given up two runs in thirty tough. innings. It's tough when you have Chapman and Kimbrel in the same league as you. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? I, no, I, I think if you're having that good of a year, I don't think it's tough at all. Well, Mark Melanson has had a pretty good year, too. So I, I view Melanson and Rosenthal pretty similarly there. I, I, I would disagree. Okay. Well, that's what we do here. We disagree. Um, anyway, we were going to talk about some uh, position player reserves. Let's go and start in the American League, where there's going to be quite a few players... Wait, that should be started. Okay, as I have a, sorry, but I have a yeah. question. I did, like I said, I did not see the start, the last update. Was Brett Gardner anywhere near that? Because if he doesn't, if he's not in the All Star game, I'm. You, 
I don't think he's going to be a starter. You know, I think he's really deserving as a reserve. Yes. I, just, such I don't know if he's going to make it, but he really... Yeah. He seems like the kind of guy who get stubs, but I really... I'm not trying to just... Like he's a, so I'm, underrated. I'm not just... I'm just not... I'm not trying to just sound like a biased Yankee fan. I really think that he's deserving. It's okay. I, I, I was, if you can sound like a biased Yankees fan, I'm going to sound like a biased Angels fan. Mike, uh, Albert Pools, I said this before this started, Albert Pools should be in at least as a reserve right now. Yeah, with that. Yeah. yeah. So the reason I think Brett Gardner will make it is because just for team representation, you're going to see him and maybe Batances, and that's it. Why not I think, I think Gardner is probably better than Teixeira at this point, because Teixeira did really hit a really cold patch there the last month or so, and his power numbers have been down. I mean, Not his, really. the home run totals are very noteworthy, but overall, I don't think Teixeira has a shot to beat out um, Albert Pools and Prince Fielder. And, and Miguel Cabrera. Is, Miguel Cabrera is going to be starting. Oh, then and Freeman, I guess. Not Freeman, uh, Not Freeman. sorry. Because you know the manager's gonna get Posmer. Ned I don't know if he. I don't know. Ned Yost is definitely gonna be. Is definitely gonna. I have a really bad feeling that Ned Yost is gonna make the whole voting thing pointless and just put it Royals in the All Star team anyways. Well, no. You he see, sounds like, like the his thing his is, managers sound like that. Like I said, managers usually focus on team representation with their final picks. Ned Yost is not sort of the kind of guy who cares about that. Well, yeah, but, you know, if he cares about his reputation at all, then... I don't think whatever. he does. Well, that is unfortunate, then. Hopefully that's not the case. I mean, I'm not saying Hosmer's undeserving. I don't think he deserves it more than some of these other players. Um, second base, you have Dozier and Kipnis, who both should could be starting. Should be starting. They, they should both be starting. I think that's what I said. No, I like, w- one of them at least... Yeah, yeah, Kipnis so, deserves it the most. Yeah, Kipnis, Kipnis deserves Kipnis. it. Brian Dozier is very close uh, to Altuve. Altuve is going to get it, I think, in the end. Yeah. But I think, I'm sorry, I know you're a big Altuve fan, but I think Kipnis is on a, on a different level. This Thanks. Season. 347. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely the, yeah. the more deserving player. Uh, Altuve has to be in the game at, in some way. Yeah. If he doesn't if he doesn't overtake Infante, then as a I, I think Dozier is the king of underrated, all, the all-underrated team, so... The king of the all underrated team. I like that. I like Dozier altogether. Like, I was, he's, he's, he's a quality player, amazing. Jim. I think if the Twins make the playoffs, he's in an MVP discussion. Just saying. Uh, I don't think he would, he would be he's deserving, he's deserving of it, but I think he wouldn't be in the discussion. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, again, if the Twins make the playoffs. Um, anyway, more, more player shortstops. Big question is: Does Carlos Correa have the? Uh, no, he hasn't played enough. But numbers wise, no, not numbers wise. But he hasn't played enough. He hasn't played enough. Okay, so who are your American League backups then? You have Iglesias, if I'll see this. I think Iglesias is the only and Bogarts. I think those are two fair ones. There. Why is Bogarts deserving? Bogarts has had a very solid year. Should I can, uh, I will list off his yeah. stats for you if you'd like. You don't believe me. I am looking it up. So it's okay. well, well, don't, don't look, don't look at ass. don't look at lists. Don't look at lists. It's not lists. It's okay. well, I guess he is. He's hitting two ninety seven. He's not deserving. Seven forty one no. OPS. No. Why wouldn't you put no. Reyes over him? Well, Reyes has missed a lot more time too. You, That's you just easy. said that Carlos Correa should make the All Star team. So. Well. American yeah, I s- no. I said it's an it's an it's a question if Carlos Correa should make it. I don't like. He's definitely talented enough to play an All Star game. What about? He will though. What about um? What's his name? Shit, where did he? What happened to him? So let me, what let me, happened? Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I just forgot about him. Here, I'll I'll, I'll think of it. Well, good good tangent, Farbo. Thank you. Um. Oh, okay. No, I, 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 I all the good it. all the good shortstop this year are in the uh. National League. Yeah, I know. There's there's True. really terrible short. So why not you put like make Brock Holt play short? <laughs> well, I don't think Brock Holt's gonna be an all. Even if he so. played short, he wouldn't deserve it. 
But uh, we all love Bar- Brock Holt. I do love Brock Holt. I don't think he's going to be an all-star, though. Sorry. True. That's fair. true. I don't think you need a utility man in the all-star game, period. <laughs> Very true. There's so much depth at each position for reserves that there's no need for a utility man. Um, other third baseman, Donaldson, is leading the way. I think... Moose, I, I know there's a lot of royal hate, but does Moustakis... No. No, Donaldson deserves it. Donaldson's starting. Okay, good. Reserve. Does Moustakis deserve to just make it, period? Does he deserve a, res- a reserve spot? No, yes, but I would put Machado over him. Yeah, I like that pick, too. And um, and even A-Rod has a shot, I think, over... I don't think A-Rod's going to make it, but you can make it. He does, especially not as a third base. See, A-Rod's anything. not going to make it, but I think from a statistical standpoint, mm-hmm. you could not argue for his boost office. He hasn't played... A-Rod's v- played virtually zero third base. Uh, he has played... Virtually. Two games. <laughs> Wait, no, yeah. he's played... He's played... I don't know. Yeah. Yes, okay. right. Yeah. I, I was just saying in general. I, I, yeah. I, would, I think that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's third base is not the same kind of strong position as it used to be. As it used to be, in the American League anyway. Like, Evan Longoria's really declined a lot. Um, Pablo Sandoval's poop. Uh, who else is around? Okay, so what about out, outfield reserves? Outfield reserves. I think uh, uh, Adam yeah, Jones. I think Gardner, Bradley. Adam Jones, definitely. I think his name is going to be the first on that reserve list. J.D. Martinez. I like J.D. Martinez a lot. So we yeah. have Jones, Brantley, um, Gardner, Martinez. Does, who else? does Mookie Betts have a chance? I don't know if he does because his season has been good, but it hasn't been like all-star good. Oh. I mean, if that makes sense. JD? Mookie Betts? Oh, Mookie? Yeah. The Mookie Cookie Monster. Like, I think you still take Jose Bautista instead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Without a doubt. Jose Bautista should be mm-hmm. starting. You can argue over. Uh, over. Who's starting in right, actually? It's, um, they have two center fielders. It'll probably be Kane. That's interesting. Because um, it's just outfield. I think not. Reddick really deserves... I think Reddick... Yes. Uh, he's cooled down, actually, a lot more than I thought. Yeah, so... The only reason I like him is be. because he got snubbed the two... Like, whatever it was. Two, two years, years ago, ago, yeah. Had to, when he had an amazing... He had, like, 21 home runs or something. And he didn't make... He so didn't get an all-star. Should we move on to the spot. National League then? Like, yeah, DH, that's a good idea. Do we need more than one DH? I say no. Oh, um... DH wasn't even a voting spot for the National League, so... I know we're talking about American League. Um, I don't know. Like, DH... Prince, right? Fielder, Prince Fielder's technically a DH, so that, that works. I think there he should go. deserve... Yeah, I think he deserves it this year. Well, Cruz is going to start. Wait, if they're playing... It, oh, wait, no, man. Yeah. No, yeah. I'd say I think... I think Fielder deserves a spot on the team. Yes, I think he will have a spot on the team. Um... Yeah, so National League reserves. Oh, we didn't talk about catcher reserves either. I think Russell oh, Martin. Oh, totally went over that. I think Russell Martin, maybe Martin Brian McCann. Sure. I don't know. I exactly. think Stephen Vote. Stephen Vote. Vote. I, I'd be happy with Vote and Martin. Yeah. Uh, I think Vote Martin should be how it is. I would. I think that's the way to go. That's fair. All right. Um, National League. We we can start with the catchers there if you want to. Uh, it's going to be Posey starting. Posey starting. Yeah, he is. Um, Cervelli's I, having a nice year, but he hasn't played enough. I don't think enough. he's an all-star. Yeah, he hasn't. He's played numbers-wise. Yeah. There's anyone who's like really a deserving backup. Well, I, maybe Yadier. Yeah, you always like Yadier. He's really, really slow offensively, but he's just such a valuable catcher. I mean, after him, overall. it's like between Francisco Cervelli and Yasmani Grandal. So it was really, I, yeah. really well, so, I let, yeah. quickly. I like his money around all overall. I don't think he's quite the numbers to make an all star appearance though this year. Well then you're left with Savelli, kid. <laughs> kid. Um yeah, it's it's tough. It's a tough it's league. It's not a good catching uh league. It's not a catchy league. Alright, man. Uh, um yeah, let's move on though. So first base. first base is a really 
tough one. It's probably going to be Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt's a monster. And Freeman, Freeman's, Freeman's out till after um, All-Star break. So. Freeman's not going to be able to. He's hurt, so. Rizzo deserves it. Deserves spot it. Rizzo and um, Joey Votto. You got Take the hometown guy, please. Oh, yeah, no, he hometown. Joey Votto's very deserving. Um, so second base. Adrian Gonzalez also, I think, needs it. Deserves it. But remember when Gonzalez hit nine it's really home runs tough. That's the first lot. week? I think I think you're the reason they sh- they should be able to it's take as many first baseman as they want. It's a DH. Yeah, one of them is going to be a DH yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, um, second baseman right now leading is is D Gordon still. I think there's no argument that there's no more deserving second baseman right now. I like yeah. Lemayhew as a backup. I think uh, who as a backup? Lemayhew. Lemayhew. LeMahieu. I like him. Wow, I think Panic and Wong are more deserving than LeMahieu. I like Pan. I think Panic's gonna get it definitely. Then I think, I think Wong. Uh, Colton Wong. I think more deserving. I don't. I, I, his numbers just don't like scream All Star to me. Like Pan- they're better than LeMahieu's. That's true. I don't. I think I have like some kind of bias for LeMahieu. I don't know why, but um, Panic is clear cut. I mean, you could look, Holly Kendrick's numbers are better than the main news, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Huh. I think it's just such the the incredibly hot start he had is throwing me off. He doesn't really do anything but hit singles, so. The singles machine. Anyway, um, shortstop. You have, starting right now, Johnny Peralta. That's a... It's a pretty good pick. It's reasonable. He's having a very good year. Uh, I think Brandon Crawford is the clear backup. Yes, I, I really like that. You're going to have a giant, giant Chulo, backup. Middle Chulo middle. is probably the, the third guy. Yeah. I don't think Simmons has enough offensively, for, in my personal opinion, to deserve it. You no, could argue that point with me if you wish. I'm not saying I don't. Like, I don't I'm have saying hypothetically, argument. someone could argue. But I just think, like, he's too, he just doesn't have the all star all around game this year. I agree completely. I don't think he ever has had the offensive all-star abilities. Anyway, um, third base is probably the toughest position. I think right now it's still Matt Carpenter. And I, Todd Frazier's making a huge push. Frazier, so I think Frazier's sure. going to... If, if Frazier's not starting, he's definitely going to be there. So. Mm-hmm. Nolan Arenado and the Arenado. Is the backup. Carpenter can still make the game. I'm yeah. very fine with that. I think those are the the big three right now, third base in the National League. Uh, who do you have? Art, Carpenter, Peter, Carpenter, and Arenado? Yeah. You know, Chris Bryant's always in the back of everybody's mind. I don't think he will get it, though. Chris Bryant's having a better year than Matt Carpenter. And he's played, uh, he has, uh, 12 less at-bats. I think if he does get it, I don't... I think it'll be a manager. Was Carpenter hurt at some point? <coughs> was Carpenter. Was he in the DL at some point? Yes, he was. Okay. Um. Um. Outfielders. Yes. So right now it is we we kind of talked about this before. It's Harper, I think Stanton and Holiday, but both of them are probably not going to be. I think you give uh, one of them to you get pa- Pollock, Jock Peterson, Jock Peterson, Pollock, Peterson, and Harper. I, I, I like that outfield right there, but um, reserve wise, it's not super deep. Uh, it's not. There, there's. I mean, there's a few that I can think of. So maybe start Denard, Martin. Denard Span is quietly one of the better mm-hmm. center fielders. Denard Span is quietly one of the better center fielders, but he just he missed a lot of time too, so it's, it's tough to say. Um, You have... I think Marte has a case. He certainly does. That's Andrew back, McCutcheon... Of course. I think Andrew McCutcheon has to have an all-star spot to some extent, because he is... Andrew McCutcheon definitely... He's, gonna, he's there. He's gonna After the first, like, two weeks, yeah. he started He started actually playing Andrew McCutcheon. He might get that... I, I, I think he might get that starting spot instead of Pollock, and then Pollock will be a reserve, yeah. honestly. Uh, so, uh, um, Ryan Broad is an interesting question, too. He might be on the... On the edge there. Yeah. And uh, Justin Upton. Yeah, I like Upton just because, like, the Padre representation more than anything. I mean, you you probably have Kimbrel, so I don't know how that's going to play out, but Upton is 
still the same offensive force as he always was. Uptown Funk. Up, Upton Funk. Upton Funk. Um, yeah, I don't think Noriyuki is as deserving as his vote total suggests. He is, uh, not at all. <laughs> Sorry, Aoki. We love you. I, I vote for Jeff Francois. Well. Yeah, I was about to say that. Oh, I beat you to it. Jeff Francois, yeah. You I, see his, uh, his amazing throw that he messed up in the corner? Yes, I did. He threw, he threw it. the ball an impressive one foot forward. I don't think I've ever seen anybody mess up quite that bad on a throw. But, um, anyway, that, that's about all for our All-Star Game discussion. Hopefully a lot of those names that we listed are in the game. Of course, there's always snubs. Can't have it all. Um, but we'll see how it, we'll see how it plays out. You know, I think there's so much talent in the game. It's, it's just, it's just a lot of athleticism and you know, from a power standpoint, you have a select few guys that have that same kind of raw power. But I think it'll be a very competitive game. I feel like the games have been much more competitive the last few years. Does it feel like that to you guys, too? Like, it's not just about, like, putting up the big numbers, you know. Like, I, I, I think now that, that it counts, games have been a lot more competitive. Agreed. The reserves have been really good competitively, too. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that goes. What What's the date of the game again? Is it the 14th? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you got it right. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. looking forward to that, though. And uh, the roster spots are announced Sunday and Monday of this week. Anyway, our next story. I, uh, Farbode, I'll let you take I'll take lead on this one because you are inside insider angels expert. Thank you, thank you. Um... So this is going to be somewhat long, but I think for everything that went on, it's kind of a brief a brief summary. Grab your popcorn. For yeah, for anyone that hasn't heard of what's happened so far with the Angels um, and Depoto stepping down, I'll explain everything right now. On June 29th, about it was when we first got news about it. Um, Ken Rosenthal had a story about just the tension between. Angels GM and the coaching staff. It was not only Mike Sosha and Depoto, it was Depoto versus basically the whole um, coaching staff. Um, Depoto went to the Angels in a meeting and had, and um, the meeting got bad and tension rose when Depoto said he wanted more, he wanted the players to have information and player analysis and basically like the data and like Moneyball, right? He wanted players to have that and, um, First of all, before I say anything, what people may not remember is that since is that um, in 2003 when Bill James was hired by the Red Sox, Depoto was also hired by that. So the Moneyball thing is kind of in play in his general manager mind. So he's big on player analysis and that stuff. But when Depoto went to the whole team with this idea, the coaching staff was against it, and even Albert Fool said. Why are you doing this? Mike Sosha and the coaching staff have been doing a great job coaching this year. It's more so the front office who hasn't supplied them with a good roster and a strong, a good strong roster like last year. So first of all, just starting off, Pujols was the first person that stood up for the coaching staff and was against anything that the photo was saying. And then the coaching staff was against it because more so they wanted to play more on like the feel of baseball like they they wanted the actual like game they wanted to play on how they felt about when what to do the shifts they were going to pull and that stuff not based on scouting reports uh, and that stuff and then tensions rose even more about a day later on the 30th this was as the angels um beat the yankees after pools and ibar went deep back to back to um and then about like 10 p.m., I, I'm sitting in my couch at home. I get news that Jerry Depoto, or before the game, had packed up his stuff and left out of emotion, but had not yet stepped down. But once it was clear he was, he had stepped down, um, one thing became clear is that Artie Marino, the owner of the Angels, um, choosing Sosha over Depoto makes the Angels the last 
manager eccentric team in the big leagues. And that's not necessarily bad, but that's not necessarily good either. Mike, one thing about Mike Sosha is that he's, this, everything that I've said so far, it makes him sound like the Stone Age baseball mind that's against any new, new, new age data that'll help him win. But no, the thing is, I was watching MLB Network. They, they said the same thing that I, I read from other stuff. They, they said that Mike Sosha wanted information that would help him win that night rather than every, like, two weeks or three weeks in the future. He wants to win that night. And that's fair, but... um, Wait, what was I saying? One thing, if this was, like, huge drama, and I don't think this is a good time for any of this to happen because of where we are in the season. It would have been much better if this was in the off season. Or anything, but one thing I don't understand is how did Depota not expect the Angels owner to side with Sosha? Because Sosha has had the longest tenure as a major league manager, and he's had all the time in the world to get fired after three underperforming years in 2010, 2011, 2013. He didn't get fired, so Marino is obviously loyal to him, and Sosha, um, this, this was the second time, um, Depoto and Sosha had an argument in Depota's years as a GM, as an angel, as in the Angels GM. I guess you could say that was Depota's final straw. But basically, overall, it was more so Mike Sosha taking his claim as the complete leader of the Angels organization. Can I say as an outside perspective, I think this is very bad for the Angels. I, think I, you, I do too. I think you guys make a terrible mistake. In I my agree. opinion, Sosha is the one who, des- who deserves to get canned. And, and he I, might after this year. I think this is a bad sign for their future, no offense. I do too. I, I, I've, like... Not that this, not that the Pota was, you know, some godly general manager. Oh no, he, he wasn't godly at all. I, I, I just, for one thing, I think this is a horrible time for this to happen, especially because the Angels need that left-handed bat and maybe another pitcher for that rotation. And this is right before the trade deadline, like a month before. And now we have, no no offense to Bill Stoneman, who was the former Angels GM, that's being the inter- interim GM right now. But he's never pulled any trade deadline trades when he was the Angels GM. And we need something. We uh, The Angels need something to help them um, get chase the Astros. I can't believe I'm saying chase the Astros. But chase the Astros... Um, mm-hmm. And beat them because they need, they need an, another bat, like maybe a Jay Bruce type of guy, a left-handed left fielder, a, any, anyone. I, but I, I think this is the worst time for it to happen. Why? I, I understand the tensions and everything, but it's just not a good time. Yeah, as an even more impartial perspective, like, R- Rudy is very anti social Oh, I, I know. Farbode is very involved in all Angels matters. I think, yeah, the timing <coughs> is the worst part about it. This happens to a lot of teams where GMs or managers get cut because things are not going according to plan, and there's a lot of clashing okay, ideals but, going around. But the, this is not the time to handle this. And I've, I've always had, I've always been confused why teams don't, like they they fire their GMs or managers very abruptly, and they don't have any plan going forward. It doesn't seem like they have a new plan. The thing about the, um, like right now for the Angels, they're the two assistant GMs that Depoto hired, and the whole front office that Depoto hired is still going to be there up till the end of the year, and we don't know what's going to happen till then. And then the like super the advisor, the head advisor of the Angels, who was the former GM. Um, who's their former GM is going to step in as their interim. But I, like, I, I'm, I said this already, but I can't wrap my head around how DePoto thought that Marino was going to side with him over Sosha. Sosha has more power over the Angels than any, any one person has over any other team in, in at Major League Baseball. He, he has every power he wants in that team. Like, 
there's like this small thing. Trout had like a little Nerf, um, you know Nerf hoop, the little hoops that you put on your doors to just play around. Trout had yes. that up, and he, like um, Sosha made them turn, make sure music's low, the volume's low, and then when Sosha saw the hoop, he took that down. The next day, Trout put it back up. He took that down. Like Sosha's very, I, I don't know. He's he's he makes sure everything's done to his way, and I'm not against that, but. I've I've been saying this for a long time. He's a very smart manager, but sometimes, especially if you've had multiple underperforming years, you might need a little change. But I think that might happen this off season because I don't think Marino wants another hap- like situation like this. Because if right now, if I were a GM looking for a job, the Angels would be not anywhere near the top li- top of that list for me because that all I'd do is oh yeah Mike do you want do you, do you um do you think this trade's good I'm I'm going to offer this and then Mike says no okay never mind My, Mike would have all the power you'd be the puppet to Mike Sosha so I think yeah I guess he's an old school tough guy I'm kind of making social sound bad but I think as an Angels fan, you still appreciate what he's done for the team, but at this point, 16 years, I think it's been too long. 16 years? Yeah. He, he was a manager during the World manager. Series. Longest tenure of any oh my God. He was hired in 99. They really Bill can't Bill. him. My God, that's way too long. He was hired in 99 by that's Bill That's unbelievable. That, he's been their manager that long, and he went to the World Series once in that whole tenure. That, that's exactly why I'm saying he, if he's been their manager that long, how did how and Marino's that loyal to him after all those years? Well, he's never going. De, that. De, well, they, Depoto was gonna, writing himself a death statement, even if he didn't quit, he was going to get fired. I will fired. say they have been a very consistent playoff threat, except the last three years, and not not last year, but the three years before that. Right, yeah, the, if, the Rangers took top, over for a while, and the A's if, took over. If you have a top ten payroll, you should always be a playoff threat. So it's not saying anything. A monkey could manage a team with a top ten payroll to the play. To not the necessarily. He is managed. Hey, I'm not sure what's Phillies. When you have Phillies, when you have twenty five people, awesome. when you have twenty five people in, in a roster, sometimes um, personalities clash. Sometimes stuff happens. You need a strong manager to. Um, uh, you know what, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I know. I know what you're yeah. trying to say. But like, I think. Even if Sosha were to get canned, I think he'd be fine. He's from Philadelphia, and he, that position might oh, God. might excite him at some point. <laughs> that's, that's, that is the worst job. Yep. But uh, hopefully he's smart enough to not t- touch any of that. But he's from Philadelphia, so who knows? Don't touch it. Stay away from the Phillies at all costs. Kill it before it, Please. Be- before it lays eggs. Hit it with a stick. <laughs> Why is it on fire quickly? Yes. Anyway, uh, that's about it for the Jerry De- DePoto story. Thank you for a boat. If you iron that out, I, I consider you a professional reporter right there. That was well, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on, let's talk about a few of the international signings that have taken place this week. The international signing period has opened earlier this week. And there's a few players that teams have jumped on very quickly. Pro- the headlining one's probably uh, Vladimir Guerrero's son, who has been signed by the Blue Jays. I'm and disappointed. Probably the top international unsigned prospect going into this. Why are you disappointed? Because he didn't sign with any of Guerrero's former teams. So? And he I'm paid. Yeah, but... Did, the, just the video, I'm disappointed that the Angels didn't sign him. Oh, wait, we don't have a GM, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh. Also, when do you guys ever sign international talent? And we have no money for international that's anymore. That's true. We, we, the Angels had an international signing that turned out to be a star. Or really well, a star. They, they just they signed Baldoquin in the offseason. Exactly. That's true. Who the hell is that? I remember that signing. I don't remember who. I don't. Remember if he was good or not. He, he he's supposed to be. Remember um, that happened. He's a middle infielder, right? A middle infielder is supposed. To be, his defense is his like top thing right now, but his offense is getting there. Mm-hmm. 
he's young, so he's. I'm just saying the Indians aren't known for their international. Oh, I know, I, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Anyway, there's a few others. I think the Mets landed a few um, solid international signings there. Um, I think a couple Cuban guys. I think um, you know, it's 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 not so much of a story right now, but uh, we'll see some names popping up soon enough. Uh, it's always interesting to see what kind of talent is left in these um, these countries where the you know there was a huge rush of these players to the major leagues, and now you kind of look at what's left, and it still looks like there's plenty of talent out there. You know, the talent doesn't just disappear. I know, Rudy, you were concerned that there's like the talent in these um, international is going to run out. Baseball leagues, yeah, it's you. You said before you think it's going to run out. It is. Just look, there will always be. It is. Just look at the most recent Cuban signings: Bruce Castillo and yes, Nani Tom, Tomas have been pretty big disappointments, and they got big. Well, Tomas seasons. has not been a disappointment. Yeah, in my opinion, he was supposed to be a big power hitter, and he has like one. He still can. There's time. Well, I, I mean, you can argue that, but Castillo has been with a clear disappointment. Okay, but athletically, he's there. And I think there's always going to be there's always going to be young players coming He's from not young. areas. He's 28. Okay, well there's there's always going to be young talent coming from these areas because you know it's it's a growing industry there too. It's not like we're just depleting them of everything. They're going to turn out as many young baseball prospects as they can too, and more and more at a higher rate. So, Why would the rate be higher? Because the talent there is being cultivated in, internationally in a, in a better way. There's, like, better, um, you know, obviously because of, like, the scouting that's out there, there's more, um, like, the, the, the what, what, what is the word I'm thinking of? I want to say camps, but I know that's not what they're called. Academies? Academies, yeah. The academies there are much better, too, now, which I think will help tap into more of the talent in that area. So I, I think we'll still see plenty of international players in the future, is what I'm saying. So John Ho Kang hasn't been that bad either. So he's That's true. Like we're very impatient with international players more than anything. Especially because they come in on pretty high salaries, and we're we're like, okay, so if they get paid the money that like guys like I don't know, like big name guys haven't gotten in the big leagues yet, they better produce right away and. Yeah, we're very impatient with international signings. You know, prospects that are home, like grown through the minor league systems and stuff and drafted, you know, you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, they're still relatively young. They'll have time to develop. And international prospects get none of that. They have to make that immediate transition. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm very okay with um, the state of international talent right now. So that's good. Um, anyway, moving on. We have a few pitchers that have returned to the bump this week. Jose Fernandez, Matt Moore, and Matt Cain all made their first starts of the year. Uh, Jose Fernandez is probably the best start of those. Cain had a pretty decent start, too, but he did give up a home run to Mr. Jose Fernandez. Before, um, before uh, what's his name, um, Matt, uh, Jose Fernandez made his start. I tweeted out this this um Jose Fernandez coming back is good for the Marlins, yes, but it's even better for baseball and just the fans of baseball. Because I don't think there's one person that disliked Jose watching him play and he's he's so exciting as a player and just like um his age right now and the way he plays, he he looks he actually looks like he loves the game and I, I love watching that part of him. It's great for baseball, it's great for the Marlins. It's good to have him back. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the biggest question is, how is he going to perform? He did, he wasn't lights out when he started. But he threw, uh, 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 one thing I was happy about is that he got up to 99, so. Yeah, that is good. He hit a home run, too. Yeah. Power's still there. Rudy, <laughs> thoughts? Nope. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good talk. Anyway, uh, Matt Moore and Matt Cain also back. Not as... Impressive showings, especially from Matt Moore. Matt Cain was okay. You know, I, I think that's where Matt Cain's going to be. He's going to be okay for the Giants. 
But uh, Matt Moore is a really big question mark. I think he's going to have to learn to pitch a little bit differently than his high-velocity, busting batters inside all day long approach. It worked before scouting reports. Did he not have a good start? No, not the first one back. But I think the the stuff wasn't terrible. I mean, there's slight velocity drop, but I think he's going to have to make some adjustments up there if he's going to be successful. And I think if any organization is capable of adjusting pitchers, it's the Rays. Oh, yeah, so but put that down. I trust in that. Um, also, Irvin Santana is set to return this Sunday Wonderful. from his suspension for the Twins, and that's a nice boost for them. Another piece in the rotation. Their rotation has been very solid, very underrated. Um, yeah, so that'll be good for the Twins. I'd also like to note that if they do make the playoffs, I believe Urban Santana is not eligible to pitch. So that that will be an interesting twist if he does have a very impactful second half. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, more pitching. Chris Sale and Giovanni Gallardo have each set some records for themselves. Chris Sale now has, I believe, the longest streak of 10 strikeouts or more in a game. Is, is it tied with Pedro Martinez right now? I don't know what is crazy. Is correct in saying it? What? You it's, don't know? But it's crazy. It, it It is crazy. I will give it that much. Yeah, so that's Sale's record. He also earlier had a streak of like um, three consecutive 12 strikeout games, which has only been done like twice before or something crazy like that. So he's been doing it with the strikeouts, certainly. And uh, Gallardo currently is at like a 29 and a third inning scoreless streak right now, which is insane. That's pretty insane for anybody. Yeah. I know it's Giovanni <laughs> Gallardo in that you don't think it's going to hold up. So that's a pretty good streak right there. It's pretty good, Jim. Pretty good, Jim. Yeah. So uh, just appreciating some of the top performances around the game, some records, a little bit of history. It's always fun to see. Um, a little bit sadder news is that George Springer will not be with the Astros for the next month or so because he has, was it a wrist injury? I believe so, yeah. I think he got hit by a pitch. Yeah, and he, yeah, he, he uh, has a wrist injury. He'll be out for you know, a month to six weeks. And um, it's a big blow for the Astros in some respects. They have tons and tons of outfielders, though. I didn't realize this before. They really do have a lot. They have a lot of outfielders, but like I I said this before we started, I think Springer is is the guy that we have. Okay, yeah, we have Correa. That's obviously amazing. And Altuve, but Springer... Just solidifies everything. He brings everything together. He's the bat. We know what that can do. And then, um, he's been so valuable defensively too. Yeah, and um, you know he's been leading off for them. Yeah, and he's been doing a very good job leading off. Not it's just it's not like, oh yeah, we don't have a lead off hitter, so you go lead off. No, he's been doing very well leading off. And I think Altuve will you know slide in that spot, and their lineup will be okay for the most part, like just organizationally. But, um, you know, it's obviously going to be slightly worse when Springer's not there. Obviously. And so as of right now, it would look like their outfield's going to be... Um, I think he's been playing some center field for them, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in the outfield... In fact, let me pull up a list. Is Marisnik back? Marisnik is almost back. I think he... He's been he was he was supposed to be out for like a couple of weeks or something. Yeah. And he's not. It's been a couple of weeks, so I think he's close. Um, let me see if I can find the Astros outfielders. There's quite a few. I'd like to list them if I can find them. Anyway, um, but perhaps we can move on to our last story. You guys can input on that. Uh, Miguel Sano. Sano. Sano has been called up by the Twins, and he is probably the most power potential of any prospect. And, that, and that's crazy when we see Joe Gallo, Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo and Chris Bryant. 
and now Saint uh, Sano is supposed to be the last big power piece of that class, I guess. They're they're in the same. This is uh, a pretty good class. Yeah, the average is not quite there. The the hitting ability is not quite the same. Oh, but, I just but, agree. Um, what? No, so there's not... supposed to be a better all all around hitter than Gallo. Oh, I, I was more referring to Bryant, but yeah. Oh, oh yeah, he's no Bryant on his own level. So yeah, my my mistake. Gallo, yeah, Gallo and Sano, uh, Sano were supposed to be just raw power kind of hitters. Well, Chris Bryant is more balanced, major league ready. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Hopefully, it works out for them. They 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 still have Trevor Plouffe, don't they? Or is he injured? They do, but they have their offense is so bad that Sano can volley DH. Uh, true. And I mean, they the Twins have had some big power guys. And recently, that just haven't worked out at all. So, you know, interesting to see how that all plays out. Yeah, their park isn't really a hitter-friendly, power-friendly park at all. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So, uh, as for their outfielders, they have... Pre- uh, the Astros outfielders, they have Preston Tucker still. They have Domingo Santana, who's another rookie, you know, another big power guy that fits the Astros profile. Uh, they have Colby Rasmus, they have Alex Presley, they have, um, again, Mersnick, I think, is almost ready. I think he might be. I, I have no idea, I, I actually, like, what the status of his DL stint is now. Um, they have LJ Hose, who has not been getting a lot of playing time, as you would expect. He's not 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 a great player, but he's on the roster. This is on their 40-man, by the way. So these are all options that are Major League ready-ish. Um, Robbie Grossman, and um, I believe that's it. So plenty of plenty of people, plenty of Major League ready replacements available. So I think they're fine, is the point. <laughs> I mean, none of those guys are great, but... None of them are great, just they're fine. Enough. It's, it's enough to... Last a month, yeah. Buy them over for a month, I think. Um, yeah, so that's good. For the Astros, hopefully not losing too much ground with Springer gone. Anyway, that is going to wrap up our top stories, though, finally. And we are going to play the stat game. You guys ready? I'm going to be hosting today. Let's see if you can take down the defending champ. Better, better not cheat this time. And yeah, I'm not cheating. I'm going to be keeping a close eye on your performance right now. I'll let you know. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with who is fourth in all of baseball in steals. D. Gordon. Bases. No. Who is the L2 today? No. Uh-huh. Ben- By the way, those are two and three respectively. Okay. Uh... Jacoby Ellsbury. No. Uh, I think he's like still like top five in the AL or something. Uh, Wait, is it MLB AL or maybe. NL? It's all of baseball. Okay. Uh, Ryan Braun. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm not even going to answer that. Wait, Polanco. No, it's not. But I'm very suspicious of you. Okay, that's quite close. No. Farbode, I'm very suspicious of you again. Jose Reyes. No. Springer? Michael. Springer, no. By the way, Polanco was sixth in the other ones that Rudy said are not top ten. What Polanco? Gregory Polanco. Does Gregory get on base enough times? He bats like. I mean, 20. he got on base 17 times. At, like, that, that's enough. Did he just steal every time he gets on base? Maybe. It's not a bad idea. I'm still looking for Ryan Braun on this list. I just want to see how far down. Okay, he has nine. 35th. So, not a bad guess, I guess, for a vote. Thank you. Keep playing. Uh. Kipnis? No. Not top 10. Uh, Cody Burns. Uh, no, he's seven. Oh, 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 oh. oh wait, never mind. He's first. Um, Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt. What the hell? No, he's actually. AJ Pollock. 
no, he's seventh, tied for seventh also. Gardner. No, he is tied for tenth. Revere. No, he's fifth. So you have two, three, and five. Kane. No, he is tied for tenth as well. Delano DeShields. No, he is eighteenth. Rajai Davis. Fourteenth. Lorenzo. Fourteenth. Lorenzo. That has already been I said. I just said piece that. Of junk. I didn't. I don't piece pay attention. Garbage. Charlie uh, Blackman. Yes, you win. You win the prize. It is one zero. Alex Rudy, take that for mode. Yeah, Blackman has twenty one steals. Good on you. Anyway, next one will be in all of baseball, who's fifth in RBIs? Who's fifth? Fifth. Jose Bautista. No, he's sixth. Who would you say? Mark Teixeira. No, he is seventh. Steven Vo. No, he is ninth. Tied for ninth. Todd Frazier. No, tied for seventh. Jock Peterson. No, not on the list. You're not on the list. Wait, what, what place are we list. talking about? Joey Votto. Fifth. Wait, why does it matter what place? I'm just saying random people. Goldschmidt. Joey Votto. Uh, Goldschmidt is third. Votto is... Not there. Is he there? I don't see him. Or is He's he... not top ten. Oh, Anthony Rizzo. No. Arenado. No, Arenado's first. Who does? Pujols, no. No, Pujols had a bad April. Um, it's RBI, so... Yeah, that's true. But, no, he's not. Donaldson. No, he's 12th. Martin. Which one? No, it's not. It's not. I don't know why I asked for Which one? <laughs> Posey. <laughs> Which one? It is Posey. Buster Posey. It's 56 RBIs. And you guys are tied one-to-one. It should be interesting going forward. Anyway, next little pitching stat here. Who is number one in innings pitched in all of baseball? Keiko. Oh, yeah, you win. Damn it. You win. I was about to say Keiko. The, the no weight really threw me right there. <laughs> I don't know. You <laughs> It confused me, even, and I'm looking at it. So, um, <laughs> Yeah. That's good on you, Rudy. <laughs> anyway. Damn it, I was about to say yeah, that. Yeah, 124 and a third. Six more than the next two. Scherzer and Kluber have the same amount of innings. I would, ex- you know, normally you expect guys like Dave- like a David Price or somebody like that to be at the top. Dude, is Kaido having a really nasty pitch? Because, like, he doesn't throw very fast. He locates everything. Ev- he, he locates everything, and everything has pretty good movement, too. Is his, is his location just incredible? Yeah. Yeah, and he, he has, was, and his changeup's pretty incredible too. Going o- along with every like his curveball, everything else, everything moves, everything's perfectly located. It's a pretty good combination: sinking fastball, changeup, curveball. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty deadly. Silent but deadly. And that beard. Yeah. So anyway, Rudy is holding a two-one lead down. Let's see if he can put Farboat away right here. Um, this one will be. For batting average, who is eighth? Eighth. Eighth. Oh my god. Well, the top ones are like really, really obvious, so I had to go down Bryce there a little bit to get some variety. No, he's sixth. Joe Altuve. Panic. Panic. No, Altuve. No. Lemayhu. No. Lemayhu's not even hitting three hundred. Yeah, he really dropped off. Yeah, but it's eight, so I don't know. Austin. Oh. No. Posey. No. Uh, uh, Machado. No. Tulo. Yes. Farbode. Tied it hitting, up. Hitting 319, Tulo Witzki in 8th place. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's ahead of those, like, your Panics, your Donaldsons, your Posies. He's, he's having a decent season, despite the power outage. So, uh, the I will have dream. one more, the tiebreaker right here. Let's see now. I'm definitely not picking this on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Who? Wait, no, that's not a good one at all. Um, 
I'm sorry. That was really bad. Yes, um, who isn't a good one? Who is a, who is a good one? Um, grr, oh, I'm looking for a good one right here. Lo siento. Poor favor. I, I don't think this is a Spanish-speaking podcast. It can you know be. What? Yeah, it doesn't. It, it can be. Not be. It could be. If you want it to be. Um... Okay, who is third in slugging in the National League? National League. Doc Peterson. No, seventh. Frazier. Mm-hmm. No, fourth. Harper. First. Stanton. Fourth. G- Gonzalez. What? Oh, Adrian Gonzalez, no. Arenado. Yes, Farbode. Damn it, takes it home again. He's you leading in RBIs, why not just guess him? Why not, right? Yep. Yeah. Anyway, damn it, Farboat, I give you credit, even though I'm pretty sure a lot of that is just what you remember from studying last week for our stat game. Freaking cheater. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Anyway, that's all for the stat game. Uh, we are going to go ahead and share our power rankings now. Which I definitely didn't just put together while Farbode was monologuing. It's okay, none of us Dipito. have them ready either. Oh, I have mine ready. I was doing it while you were uh, rambling uh, about Jerry uh, Dipido. I totally... Dipido. I honestly completely forgot about... Oh, were you guys getting yours ready while Dipido? I was. Dipido. I'm smart like that. Anyway, um... Farbo, do you have yours prepared? Um, I am ready. Okay. We'll let Rudy go last. <laughs> hmm... <laughs> Mm. Okay, who's going? You are, begin. Um, we had, okay, so I'll start number, I'll do the rooting method. Number one, I have the St. Louis Cardinals. We said yes when we said Cardinals last week, yeah. This um, week we can say indeed. Indeed. Okay, number two, I hate this team, but I, th- I don't think I can say, keep them out of it anymore. The Kansas City Royals, third. Kansas City Fight Club? They're Defensive run save, they're doing great. They're still hitting somehow. And. Somehow. And they're almost the all, American League All-Star team, so you, they have to be there. Um, number three, I have probably one of the hottest hitter, hottest teams in baseball, the Washington Nationals. Um, obviously aided by, um, Max Scherzer, but their whole pitching staff's been doing really well. That's what you expect mm-hmm. from that team to do. What was that? He's quite tired. He's young. I can imagine. Okay. You're putting him to sleep with your power rankings. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah. Their pitching is so, yeah. doing really good, and that's what we expect. So, number four. I'm not putting it, I'm not putting it together on the fly. Um, number four, I'll give it to the Houston Astros, because they are very good. And they have Carlos Correa. Because they are very good. And I I believe in them now, even though I don't want to. I'm very depressed whenever I talk about the Houston Astros. They, they, they're they actually having a lot of fans show up now, and that's very surprising. Because mm-hmm. their t- even their TV viewers like two years ago was prob- was the worst in baseball. It was horrible. Is their stadium air-conditioned, I wonder? That's a random question. I don't know. How would I know that? I'm just wondering out loud. Let me have my thoughts go. It is not an indoor stadium. It is not a roof stadium, so... It's not. I'm just wondering. I'm wondering if the heat has anything to do with the fact that people go to these games. Um, and number five, I had them in my, um, I had this team in my power rankings last week, or two weeks ago, I forget. I'll, I'm putting them, I'm giving them it as the, no, actually no. Yeah, um. What? The, I'm no, gonna, what are you doing, man? I'm Wait, gonna no. Give it yes. to, um, no. the Dodgers. Okay. Because, yeah. I'm uh, yeah. ready, can I go? Can I go? And see. You can go. Huh? You may, you may go. Um, okay, so one Cardinals, two, uh. Indeed. Two Nationals, three Astros, um, four um, Pirates, five Dodgers. 
Wait, Wait sorry. Four Dodgers, five Pirates. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Thanks for the... to say that, and even we talk about those teams every week. Uh, the power rankings are getting kind of stale. Uh, well, so like team any any teams streak, that any teams that changed position that you want to talk about or no that like changed spots in, the like in general. No, like in your power rankings, any teams that jumped spots? Yeah. No, it's any... the same as last week, really. What is it the same as last week for you? No, I didn't. Have, I had a I think I had Baltimore instead of the Pirates last week. So you just took Baltimore out just because? Well, they cooled down quite a bit. Uh, I guess they're still in first place, but whatever. Not they're tied, so <laughs> it tied doesn't count. Uh, I mean, the past like two weeks, really, no one's been. It's been a pretty mediocre. Everyone's playing about five hundred ball in the major leagues, except for Milwaukee, who's on an insane tear, and yeah, I kind of uncomfortable. Tampa Bay, who went two and eight, so it got swept in a four game series by the Indians, so. Yeah, 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 they almost got no hit like three games in a row. Yeah, yeah so they're really good at almost getting no hit. Oh, uh, I think it's notable that Detroit is only five hundred right now. And very notable. That the Mets, not surprisingly, cooled off considerably. Yes, because their defense sucks. And that the Arizona Diamondbacks. Are they're still three games they're still five hundred in a third game. They're a third place in the division, and they're. A very, very bad team, and they're not in conference. They are very bad. I mean, they have Goldschmidt and Pollock, yeah, but past that, they're a very not good team. So Very not good. I think yeah. it's very interesting if they're having such a mediocre season, considering. That in-depth analysis. Anyway, yeah. yeah, so I am going to change it up on you guys. So, not Cardinals first. Not indeed. I have the Washington Nationals in first, because... Pitching, basically, is amazing. They have Strasburg back. They have Zimmerman pitching well again. They have Scherzer still dealing every single time he's out there. And that's a pretty good formula right there. You have three. should be aces working. Um, and then, you know, their offense has been very good as well, as it has been for a while. Um, the Cardinals have dropped to my two spot because of pitching, basically. Like, you know... They really don't have the depth that, you know, you'd expect. Like, they've been kind of battling, but now it's kind of starting to show that their pitching can't just carry them. Like, even when it's they're, they're struggling out there. And their offense has not been unbelievable lately either. Like, it should be way better, if that makes sense. Does it make sense? Well, there's a lot of underperformers in their lineup. Um, anyway, third, I have... Not the Kansas City Fight Club, but I have the Minnesota Twins third. Because they're keeping, they're keeping stride with the Royals. And, you know, Miguel Sano called up. That's always a big boost when you have a prospect called up. Um, Buxton should have been a push, but now that he's on the DL, they're going to go ahead and give him a second shot when he gets back, hopefully. Um, so I'm looking forward to that again. Irvin Santana is going to be back, too. Another boost to the rotation. And... As I already mentioned, they have a super underrated rotation. Um, I think, you know, you're probably looking at Trevor May being the odd man out, most likely. So, and he's a very good starter as well. So, when he's your sixth guy, probably when Santana comes back, that's pretty solid. Um, anyway, the fourth team I have is the Kansas City Fight Club, because they just win constantly. You know, they're very static. Not not much changes with them. Um, but they, they continue to win. Play good defense, win some ball games, good bullpen. Pitching has been um, very, very good considering all the injuries they've had. So I will give them credit for that. Fifth, I have the Astros because they're holding down first place like champions. And George Springer's down. And like I said, I don't think they need to panic. Because uh, they're uh-huh, still uh-huh. a very good team. What? What was that laughing about? No panic. Yeah. That, not even the same team. <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking of, though. I thought you'd be some credit there, but... No, that was stupid. <laughs> okay, jeez. No, you ruined everything. God damn it. Alright, man. 
I'm, 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 I'm trying, settled down. I'm trying to I, up the mood a little bit. I'm trying to get you guys to wake up. Rudy. Mr. Yawning. Anyway. <laughs> 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 what the fuck is that? What? Now we're awake. What the hell was yeah. that? He he's embarrassed. I think I think we embarrassed him too much. No, anyway, that that was a Rudy thing. Let's go ahead and finish up with our uh, fantasy competition. Um, <laughs> this week, I this past week, I picked Sonny Gray, and he was bad. No, he did not pitch because he was had bad. Out. It's not it's not the exact definition of bad, but he did not pitch. His body was bad. bad. It's worse than bad. It's yeah. nothing. His body was bad. His chicken was bad. What? True. He had salmonella. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you not get that? Okay. Anyway. Sorry, um, I was so caught up in the pig. So, in the first pig pick pig. this week. You want to give it to Rudy again for the fifth straight time? Or no? no, it's okay. Yeah? Okay, far both. Um, I don't know how I haven't done this original earlier all because I'm an Angel fan of Mike Trout. Well, screw you. Um, no. No. Um, I will go ahead and pick Matt Carpenter. I'll, be, I'll go uh, Kidness and McCutcheon. Kidness and McCutcheon. Okay, my turn. I will pick... I think I'll stay Cardinals and go Johnny Peralta. I will go with Dallas Keuchel. Keuchel. Wait, shit, that wasn't the picture I wanted. Wow, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn again. Um, I will Wait, no, it's not. What are you saying? First pick. No? Yeah? Oh, yeah, it is. You are. God. You're correct. Um, Sorry, I just really don't want you to pick again. <laughs> I will go with... I was going to say JD, but I had him last week. Um, Buster Posey. Yeah. Booster Poozy. Yeah. That was my turn. Yeah, um, it is. I will, I will pick Zach Grinky. I'll go with Corey. 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 Uh, <coughs> Corey Kluber. There we go. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> I, did. I meant it. You really meant it. So, That's why I said it. All right. So Alex Rudy with uh, Jason Kipnis, Andrew McCutcheon, Corey Kluber. Far bowed with Mike Trout, Dallas Keuchel, Buster Posey, and I went with Matt Carpenter, Johnny Peralta, and Zach Greinke. Cool, cool. So, the by the way, the race in that um, division, in that division, our competition is... Um, There's no race. You're winning. I'm winning right now, but the gap is closed significantly since I basically had two wasted starts. So, and I had I'm no... giving you hope. I had no pitchers two weeks ago, so... Mm-hmm. We're really good at this. Am I yeah. second? Yes, yeah. you are. I had no pitchers two weeks ago, so you, like, I lost that 10-point deficit. I was down by 10 to you. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. We'll keep you updated on that. I don't have the point totals, nor the energy to find the point totals. So, uh, that's all for it, today. It takes Thank a you. five-hour energy, I think. True. Next time, next time, we'll all be... Super energetic. Trust me. Anyway, uh, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. You can f- tweet at us at WPB underscore podcast if you have any feedback for us, questions, comments, criticisms, anything at all. Um, you can email us at warandpeacebaseball at gmail.com as well. Or Instagram, our, we are war underscore peace underscore baseball. Po- baseball. Right. I think, yeah. I think, yes. We're professional. Um, Yeah, that's our Instagram. But, uh, yeah, that's all for today. And with our new exit, here we go, Farbode. Let's see if we can do it. Peace. Yeah.